Welcome back everybody to another fun gear review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the LSO 619 or is it the 618 camping stove? I'm not sure on the model number and I don't think the Chinese are either. But as always if you're interested in anything I review on this channel I provide links down in the description. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at this packaging. It is in Chinese and English. Here's the English side, safety instructions. All pretty straightforward. Some more specs and everything here on the back. And then you get over here and it's all Chinese. And there we are, and nothing on the bottom. Let's get the stove out to take a look at it and the accessories that come with it. So here is the stove, pretty slick. Comes with a bag, and there are accessories inside the bag. Let me fish them out. So, comes with this nice dust storage bag. Comes with a multi-tool for the stove. And, uh, oh, that's tight. It's brand new. It's barely moving. Okay. Looks like we have a cleaning needle right there near my middle finger. This socket wrench is for the nozzles, which are down in there in the middle of that burner. And then you got a wrench here and a wrench here. So that's your little multi-tool for the stove. You get three nozzles. The nozzle that's installed in it right now is for white gas or gasoline. You get a diesel fuel nozzle and you get an alcohol nozzle. So this stove is capable of running on four different fuels. You also get this little funnel. Okay. Also inside the box are instructions, but as I'm about to show you, they are all in Chinese. Everything's in Chinese. Okay. There's all that. And then there's this guy, which I'm unfolding right now. And that's all Chinese. Well, I took my Google Translator app to it on my tablet and I managed to work up some passable instructions between that and just common sense of using similar stoves throughout my life. So, let's get into the specs on this little guy and then we're going to do some checks here. Uh, specifications in this camping stove it's 145 by 137 by 155 millimeter tall. And the reason it's got a different uh, side to side measurement is because this pump here sticks out a little bit on the side. So that is the 145. Well, the base here is 137 millimeter. That equates to 5.7 inches by 5.3 inches by 6.1 inches tall. Net weight of this stove is 820 grams or 1.8 pounds. Maximum capacity of the fuel tank is 500 milliliters or 16.9 ounces. However, you do not max out this fuel tank. We'll get back to that in a moment. Maximum safe ambient temperature to operate this stove in, according to their specs, is 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's as hot as you can get outdoors and, <laughs> and safely operate this stove, holy smokes. Minimum ambient temperature for operation is negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative four degrees Fahrenheit. If you tamp this flame down to a small flame, like a simmer flame, they say you can get three hours of burn time from a full tank. If you crank this up 
to the highest flame you can get. They say from a full tank you can get three hours of burn time. If you crank this down to a small simmer flame, you can get four hours of burn time. This tank, the running pressure in this tank once you pump it up is between 0.2 and 0.4 megapascals or 29 to 58 PSI. Uh, maximum bearing weight, that's the heaviest thing you can put on here, like a pot, is 5 kilograms or 11 pounds. Once again, the fuel types this will run. It will run white gas, unleaded gas, that's the nozzle that's installed right now in there, uh, alcohol and diesel fuel. You should use the appropriate nozzle with whatever fuel you are using. Now first thing you should do with any camping stove like this that you get is you should look it over for dents or dings or any kind of obvious damage. And there are none on this. I previously looked at this. Okay. And this stove is kind of interesting to me and that's partly the reason I got it was because it is, you know, look at that. You can see the end of the pump in there. See that way down in there? That's the end of this pump. And it looks like right underneath there, you can see that orange? That's rust. That's where the paint didn't get, and it's rusting underneath here. So I'm going to have to get in there and uh, take care of that. Not a big deal. You expect stuff like that that comes on the slow boat from China. Okay. Now, one couple safety concerns. Anytime you're dealing with a liquid fuel type stove, you should never operate this in an enclosed area. It produces carbon monoxide gas, and if you're not careful, you know, that can kill you. Not to mention the fact that this is burning refined gasolines. It's no joke. It will burn your tent down, okay? It's always a good idea to just go outside to use it. Now, what is this suitable for? Well, car camping, uh, glamping, that sort of thing. I wouldn't say this is suitable for hiking and all that. It is pretty large here, my hands. You know, this is not a small stove, it's pretty big. It's on par with a Coleman uh, 502503 stove. And it's interesting to me because this like has design elements of like three different stoves I can think of off the top of my head. It has design elements from like a Coleman with the pump and everything. The uh, valve here, and this whole system reminds me of a BSR-12. The burner and this tulip arrangement for the burner reminds me of a Saveo 123. It's like all these stoves got together and this is their crazy child. <laughs> all right. Now we've already done the first step here as we've inspected the stove for damage. And uh, there is no damage. Now we are going to inspect it for air leakage. I'm just taking this off camera to make sure I got the uh, the fuel cap here nice and tight. And now I'm going to pump it up to pressure. They say pump it more than 30 times, but you know this is very similar to a Coleman. I've never had to pump my Coleman that much. and that's 30 so I'd say between 25 and 30 times so now it's pumped up to pressure so now we are going to check for leaks I have a spray bottle here and it's got nothing but dish soap a little bit of dish soap and water and a paper towel and the first thing we're going to check for leaks is around the fuel cap so you just want to lightly spray you want to get it wet around the fuel cap and I'm already making a mess because I'm trying to do this on camera 
and then you want to look for any forming bubbles and I don't see any I don't see any at all that's awesome okay so our fuel cap seals good you also want to hold this up to your ear and do you hear any hissing and I don't hear any hissing anywhere that's good by the way you got to make sure your uh, fuel valve here is closed clockwise to close it next thing is I'm going to check around the pump okay I'm looking I don't see any bubbles okay fuel pump looks good wipe that off and this is a bayonet design on the fuel pump very similar to later model Coleman's that they use except it doesn't have the hole in it like a Coleman it's got a breather hole right there though I don't know if you can see that right there that little tiny hole all right so that all checks out and the last place I want to check is right here around this valve and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that tag because that tag is like right in the way so I can check this valve okay so let's go ahead right there and right there and I'm looking I'm looking I don't see any bubbles I don't see any bubbles at all so I'm gonna wipe that off it looks like it's good it looks like we don't have any leaks I put it up to my ear I've done that test with the soapy water I don't see any leaks so we might be good all right current price on Amazon for this guy is forty five dollars and eighty nine cents that is a phenomenal deal for a gasoline type stove now why am I interested in these type stoves well I like camping stoves just in general and I do collect them but I wanted a cheap stove that I can take with me uh, in my homemade little camper arrangement and if my truck gets broken into and somebody steals everything I'm not out a lot of money and I don't want to take my Coleman and get that stolen sadly we live in a world where you have to factor in stuff like that hey what if all my stuff gets stolen you know other specs on this they claim that this has two minutes to boil one liter of water and they say the fuel consumption is 120 milliliters per hour now you should only fill this tank according to their instructions that I translated to 450 milliliters that's 15 ounces because you need to leave some air in the tank so when you pressurize this it operates properly okay we will do a quick dry weight on the stove so one pound nine ounces or 710 grams now, all right we are outside we had a little snow last night current temperature out here is about 30 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius so this is going to be a real-world test of our little stove we pumped up the pressure inside the house it's got pressure in it so from here you can go ahead you could use a small bottle of alcohol or stove fuel and saturate this area here and light it or you can just open crack the valve for three to five seconds and let it do its thing and then light it and that's what we're gonna do because they didn't give us a priming bottle so we're gonna do it old school and needless to say when you're doing this I don't see no fuel yet 
when you're doing this, don't put your face over the stove. I'm off here to the side because if it squirted out real bad, you don't want that in your eyes. Ah, and I'm getting some fuel. Huh, I only got a little squirt. How come? All right, I guess I gotta pump it up some more. All right, pumped it up some more. We're gonna see if we can get some more fuel out of that because it's gonna need a little bit more than that little squirt I just got. Okay, I'm not getting much. <laughs> well, we might have to result to the other way of doing it. Okay, the old school way of doing this is to open the tank, use a pipette, or back in the day we used to use a length of drinking straw. Stick it in there, put your th thumb or finger over it and pull out and plop the fuel in here. But I got pipettes. Pipettes are a little easier to use because I only got a little dribble of fuel out of that and I need more because of the uh, temperatures. Oh yeah, now I'm getting some fuel. And you could stick this in the kit. I think that's plenty of fuel. Okay, one, one good fill. Get this cap back on, then I gotta pump it up, then we light it. Okay, now I gotta pump it up 30 times again. Here we go. Valve is firmly closed. Now we light it. To light this, I'm just using old school kitchen matches. And there it went. Now we want to let that build up heat and pressure. I know there's fuel in that generator tube. And we basically want to let this burn until it's almost burned out. Then we try to start it. Actually open the valve and run fuel. So I'm going to shut up and just let this burn. All right, it's pretty burnt down. We're gonna try uh, starting it. Getting our match here ready. See, it sounds like a little rocket. Let's see if I can turn it down just a hair. Now 
I'm just gonna let this warm up for a bit and then we're gonna throw the pot on and do the boil test. Okay, I've got the valve open full. I've given it several minutes to get nice and hot. You can see the uh, tulip area of the burner and the flame spreader is starting to turn nice and red. I've got my 64 ounce Pathfinder pot here and I've got one liter of water in it. So we'll throw that on and see how long it takes to burn. starting to boil. That's a boil in my opinion. I mean, look at that. At almost 12 minutes, I'd call that a boil or close enough. All right, let's shut this down. That's full stove in action. The boil test went a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Not totally surprising, but uh, when they said two minutes, I was trying to figure out, you know, in what conditions were they getting one liter of water boiling in two minutes? Obviously not real world conditions or cold conditions. The only other thing I want to say about this stove, I want to point out, when you look on their page, um, these are the nozzles, right? That's a nozzle. They're pointing to this right here and calling it the nozzle. That is not. I'm going to rotate this stove. I'm going to change our angle. Down inside there, you'd have to remove this flame spreader, but down inside there, I'm going to zoom in on it. down right in there you see that brass right down in there in the bottom that is the nozzle so you got to remove this flame spreader which will take a pair of pliers to bend these tabs back pop it off and then you can use this socket on there to change out these other nozzles but that is the nozzle mistakenly they're pointing at this and calling this the nozzle that is not all right so, is this stove worth the price? I think it is. Uh, it's a bargain at that price. I've never seen a gas stove offered so cheaply before. <sighs> is there safety concerns? I don't know. Is this white material in there that's now looking kind of charred? Is that stuff dangerous? Is it asbestos? I don't know. So it's really up to you whether or not you want to get a stove like this. I have two more stoves that I'll be doing videos on. So I would say hold off on buying anything until I post those other videos and you see what is out there. This is the first, two more to go. All right, so that's all I got to say on the LSO 619 or 618, whichever one it is. Not a bad little stove, I've seen worse in my life. And uh, I will see you, yeah, you, out in those woods, maybe having a good time.